Yoga Day to everyone, everyone. And uh, it's really an international session here that uh, people across the globe have connected into this session. So today's session is uh, going to be some theory, a lot of practicals. And uh, as you might have read, uh, uh, you know, a lot of uh, this post from Shilpa and the uh, your HR group, it's about a respiratory system, immune system, how to improve that through pranayama and also how to deal with uh, stress. Um, so we're going to look at all that. I'll talk a lot about yoga. I'll talk a lo lot about pranayama, etc. But at the moment, I'll talk about what is this respiratory system and uh, how we can improve immunity, how yoga and pranayama helps with this. So. Uh, all of you know, or all of you might be aware that without food, we can live, humans can live for 30 to 40 days. And we can live without water for two to three days. But without air, we cannot survive more than two to three minutes. So this respiratory system is very, very important. Air, the oxygen is one of the most important thing for the human body. So as you can see in that picture, you can see two lungs there and then there is that windpipe that goes in through your throat into your uh, towards mouth and nostrils. So it's a very, very small, simple system actually and protected inside a rib cage. It is quite important and that's why uh, nature has given a good rib cage which saves your lungs, heart and all the most important parts there. So coming back to the respiratory system. So your lungs and the windpipe, that basically forms the respiratory system. Now, uh, what are these lungs? So it's a pair, there are two lungs, right lung and left lung. It's a pair of very spongy air-filled organs. And what these do is basically they give oxygen to the body and remove carbon from the body. Now that's the most important function. The second function that they do is also they balance the pH level. Uh, they balance the acidity and alkalinity, alkalinity of the body. So that is also the function of lungs, the, the second function. Now there are two lungs, as we said, there is a right lung, there is a left lung. Now, right lung is a little bigger than the left one, because as you can see, there's the, that heart fitted between two lungs, slightly towards left side. And that is why there's a, a smaller portion into left lungs, but both do same function. And then you can also see something called as diaphragm. You know, that's a, that's a uh, the diaphragm is a, is a, uh, body part that basically moves up and down and that is why the breathing happens. Now, uh, when the diaphragm moves, it, it pushes the abdominal organs down and when it goes up, it pushes lungs and your heart upwards. Now, this diaphragm it has always a fixed moment when it, does, when it goes down, you inhale, when it goes, you exhale. When we do pranayamic practices, and I'll explain what pranayama is basically, it is uh, in short, in simple words, it is breathing exercises, you can say, in simple words, or it is the uh, different breath, breaths, types of breaths that you, so this diaphragm moves two to three centimeter more than normal movement when you do the pranayama. Also, if you see these lungs, they have, at the end, they have very small grape-like structure that is called as alveoli. Now there are 700 millions of alveoli in our lungs. And not all of those are efficiently used because if you do not do deep breathing and elongated exhalation, not all these alveoli will be used efficiently. So we're going to learn today a few breathing techniques that will make sure that all the alveoli are efficiently used. If they are not used, they are kind of triggered with the deep breathing. Uh, so we looked at diaphragm. Now you know that's, that's, a, that's a big flat muscle which divides the chest and abdomen region or the abdominal cavity 
and the chest cavity or the thoracic cavity that is called as so so that's uh, that goes down and up as as we discussed now how many breaths we do in a minute so normal human being does 15 to 18 breaths per minute through yoga through pranayama our attempt is to go down to take like 10 to 12 breaths only in a minute or if possible, go down to seven to eight breaths per minute. Now, why should one do this? So, according to yogic philosophy, according to yogic science, our life is n number of breaths. Now, we have to decide how to use these breaths. We um, breathe fast, we do shallow breathing, that is called a chest breathing, fast breathing, then your life span will be low less and if you do deep breathing like the yogis that that they do deep breathing and if you you, you might have heard yogis living 150 year 200 year because they do very slow very rhythmic elongated breathing so uh, you might have seen that animals that breathe faster die earlier like a dog or animals that breathe slow that that live longer like a tortoise now how much air you breathe in in a minute or throughout the day in a minute we breathe in seven and a half to eight liters of air in that 20 only 20 percent is oxygen 79 80 percent is nitrogen roughly 20 percent is oxygen and this is a very minute very small carbon as well 0.04 percent that is when we inhale and when we exhale all of the nitrogen, that is 79%, plus 16% of oxygen and 4% of carbon is exhaled out, which means whatever 20% oxygen we inhale, out of that only 4% is used. Only 4% of oxygen is, oxygen is used. So roughly throughout the day, we are breathing 2,200 liters of pure oxygen. Now that data is not, not that very important, but I thought, uh, it is good to know. Anyway, so we shall move forward and uh, our whole session is depending or, or based on this respiratory system. Now, in current situation of COVID, everybody has read so much and heard so much about, you know, improving respiratory system, improving your immunity. And now you are saying that through pranayama, what we're doing is we're strengthening the respiratory system. So we're straight away attacking that COVID. We're making sure that COVID cannot attack you or if that attacks, you are safe because your respiratory system is very strong. Uh, what are the typical elements that you get um, uh, because of the respiratory system issues, infections like pneumonia, uh, people have asthma, bronchitis, TB or tuberculosis. Um, lung cancer is the is the you know very high level of uh, the disease in the respiratory system. So these are some of the elements that you get if we do not take care of our lungs, our respiratory system properly. And what are the causes? The key cause is smoking. Um, uh, infections now infection let's say due to cold also you may get you know if you do not take care properly or timely measurements if you do not take then you may have asthma or that may grow to bronchitis and all that now some of these are genetics some of these are because of uh, allergies or exposure to chemicals pollutions etc now okay so is there a solution for this yes uh, solution is very simple very few lifestyle changes few changes in into your food habits and if you can do yoga now even from yoga i'm again you know kind of filtering and making it very easier for you i'm asking you to do pranayama so uh, how yoga helps now now okay so let me talk a little bit about yoga here uh, yoga is minimum five to six thousand year old. Some people say it is as old as ten thousand years. And uh, what does this yoga consist of? What all are the uh, things 
that are involved into yoga. So yoga, it's a simple term, yoga, uh, that comes from a word called as yuja in Sanskrit. Yuja means to join, to combine, to yoke, to yoke two things. Now, what are those two things? Body and mind. If we can connect body and mind, then the next step is to connect the mind with spirit or the Atma and then uh, the, the Atma with the Paramatma or the individual consciousness with universal consciousness. So we'll get to that. Um, now, this yoga has different kind of small, small things in it. And uh, there are a lot of old texts, there are a lot of types of this yoga, but one of the key type or the key school is Patanjali's Ashtanga Yoga. What is Ashtanga Yoga? Ashta, Anga, that is eight limbs of yoga. So there are different, different things, different limbs really, and I'll just name and, you know, that's not very important for you. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. Okay. So these are the eight things in Ashtanga Yoga, then there is Chaturanga Yoga, Shadanga Yoga, Sattanga Yoga, Panchadashanga Yoga, which means there are yogas which has got four limbs, six limbs, seven, eight, ten and fifteen as well. But if you see, they all talk about same thing, but they all talk about asanas or the physical postures that everybody is aware about what yoga people think it's only asanas, but it's asana is one of the things. Second is pranayama, the breathing practices. The guy that you see seated here is doing some pranayama with some mudra here. Okay, This is called as yoni mudra incidentally, but we don't need to learn or understand that. Uh, this is just to show you what pranayama is or how you know that is a higher practice. And the third part that everybody is aware about is meditation but actually this meditation has three uh, types or three small small divisions inside it is called as concentration meditation and then transcendental stage anyways what we are going to do today is the second of this asana and then i said pranayama or the breathing exercises in english in um, Yoga textbooks, it is also called as Kumbhaka. Kumbhaka is nothing but breath holding. So Pranayama is more about breath holding rather than inhalation and exhalation. Okay. So let me explain what does that mean. So let's first look at this. What is Prana? What is Prana? So Prana is the vital force, energy, in our body. So it is said that this, this whole cosmos was created because of prana. But let's look only at, at our individual body. You can see in that picture there's a person sitting there that's called as Pinda and then the, the, the cosmos that's called as Brahmanda. So you have to connect again this, this individual body with the cosmos, Pinda and Brahmanda. How do you do that? That's the individual consciousness meeting with the universal consciousness. And how do we do that? We do that through pranayama. Now, if you see a alive person and a dead body, what's the difference? We say that in that dead body, there is no consciousness or, or there is no prana. So that's the prana, the, the vital force, the, you can say in, a, in, in simpler words, consciousness. And that is what we manipulate, we control, and then it, it becomes pranayama. Prana plus ayama is pranayama. So ayama is elongation, manipulation of prana. Okay, controlling the prana. So in pranayama, you lengthen your breath, you shorten your breath, you increase the speed. You do something different than the normal breathing practices and that is why it is called as pranayama. Now, the asanas that you see there, you know, anywhere you go in the world, there are classes that teach physical postures, the asanas. Now, asanas are called as hatha yogic practices. You might have heard this word hatha yoga as well. So asanas is hatha yogic practice. But the higher practices, and if you see all the big sadhus or the yogis, they are always seated in meditation or doing pranayama because those are the higher practices. The goal of Hatha Yoga is to achieve Raja Yoga. Raja Yoga is nothing but getting that meditative state in simpler words. 
or one of the goal is also to get the sahaja kumbhak that is very easy control on your breath easy holding your breath okay and then if you practice pranayama properly it helps you get into meditation a lot of people come to me saying that hey we can't do meditation we can't concentrate really if you do practice is properly if you do pranayama before that then you can certainly concentrate now uh, i will not go much in detail and let me look at the uh, the the watch okay it's already 20 minutes so um just one concept i would like to explain so as i said kumbhaka is one of the technical terms there are three technical terms really puraka kumbhaka rechaka puraka is inhalation kumbhaka is breath hold rechaka is exhalation you don't need to remember these technical words i'm just going to refer inhale exhale and breath hold that is called as kumbhaka now what happens is that why you should have kumbhaka in, in into your pranayama why should you do little bit of breath holding during pranayama is because that is what is called as pranayama in textbooks that's the most important phase of pranayama and that is why everybody should practice that now depending on your health depending on your age it depends how much of kumbhaka you do now what happens because of this lot of places all over the internet you will see that oxygen increases because of pranayama that's incorrect oxygen increases increases only when you do hyperventilation there are pranayamas called as kapalabhati bhasrika so hyper fast ventilation fast very high speed breathing when you do then your oxygen increases but most of the pranayamas are about elongating your prana elongating your breath and that is why instead of 7 and 1/2 8 liters of air in a minute you are taking only 3 and 1/2 4 liters of air when you do very slow inhale very slow exhale so what happens is that in 7 and 1/2 liters 20% is your oxygen now 20% of 7 and 1/2 liter and 20% of 3 and 1/2 liter is obviously less so you get less oxygen and when you do the breath hold little bit of breath hold as per your capacity little carbon increases in the body and that carbon works magic that goes into your brain that goes into whole your body and that soothes calms your brain okay so that is how this whole thing works and because of that calming effect you get lot of these benefits the first one lung capacity of a well wells are you know strongest lung capacity so if you do pranayama with kumbhaka you will get this